Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice, where we do the songs that you recommend the most. I want to give a shout out to our subscriber, Michael, who described today's song as having a 17-second scream that gives you absolute chills. Michael's comment received over 4,000 thumbs ups, so that means that right now I'm going to give a first-time listen to Linkin Park's performance of Given Up. Let's get to it. This is a lot to take in right away. A very, very intense. These vocals are more harsh. Have, they have more distortion than I heard in the previous Linkin Park song I reviewed, Breaking the Habit. And he's he's really... It, it, the goal here that I'm hearing is not to aim for beauty in vocals, but to aim for distraught expression. I want to go back to the beginning. Uh, whew, that's intense. <sighs> This very fast clap that they've set up with the audience, it's you know, that's quite quick to get an audience to go with. That would definitely add to the intensity right away. It amps up the energy in a performance. Not to mention the distortion of the guitar. <laughs> So his approach right now is both from an acting perspective, both inwards out and outwards in. Uh, those are sort of two different widely accepted approaches to acting, um, where either you go to a feeling that you've built up inside to bring some sort of truth out, or you use actions that might be from that character to make you feel as if you're that character. So when he's hitting on his head, that would be outward in, essentially. And... I think that that's part of the reason that he's so in this particular character. It feels, it feels very real. It already is reminding me a little bit of uh, Maynard and Tool. Sometimes he's just so incredible how he gets into character. I'm gonna go back a little bit. Another day's been laid to waste in my disgrace. Stuck in my head again. And you know, sometimes it looks like he almost has his mic against his nose. He's holding his mic extremely, extremely close. This low in his range with a kind of distortion too would be hard to project. Um, he's really, yeah, it's still very fierce and powerful. Good mic. Grace, stuck in my head again. Feels like I'll never leave this place. Hey. There's no escape. I'm my own worst enemy. I've given up. I'm sick of feeling. Is there nothing you can say? Take this away. I'm suffocating. Tell me what the fuck is 
so much fry and wrong. He really brings in a ton of distortion there. And it's clear that he's working very hard on stage. This kind of singing that he's doing, the intensity of it, it's not just emotionally intense, but it's also physically very, very intense. You can tell he's really using a ton of his body to support that sound. And uh, I think the first line is even wake in a sweat again, which is a little ironic considering he's so sweaty at this point. I wonder if he's dehydrated. That would be rough. Just want to call out singers work hard to do what they're doing. Anyhow, let's keep going. I don't know what to take. Thought I was focused, but I'm scared. I'm not prepared. Ooh. I hide for away. Whoa. Looking for help somehow, somewhere. And no one cares. Hyperventilate in there. Prepare. I away. <sighs> that is that is such a cool way to add expression to that word. He's literally shaking himself as if he was hyperventilating. This it's that same outward in kind of thing. Whoa, whoa. That's cool. That is, it's gut punching how much it feels, it really truly feels like he's screaming, but having sustained screams. Sometimes that's what I feel like when I'm singing a high C too. It's just like, sing a high C, make it sound pretty, sustain it. And it's basically like telling you to sing pretty and sustain it for a long time <laughs> or scream pretty and then sustain it. Ugh. Anyhow, notice the way he puts his foot up here. That can help. Um, you see the one leg up, that can help with actually um, bringing the support system a little bit lower, uh, also having your feet spread wide apart like a horse stance like Bruce Dickinson does, that can help. When you're singing a sustained high line like this, it is important to keep low support. Otherwise, these vocal folds are just going to feel really tired the next day or halfway through the performance. You don't you don't want to wear them out there. You've only got a couple of vocal folds, okay? It's not like you can go buy a new set of vocal folds or like you can buy a new guitar, right? And this is, you've got one set of vocal folds. Don't destroy them, please. Having a foot up on something is really, really good. Um, that it actually helps keep the pelvis tilted under a little bit, which can help deepen that support further. The lowest support muscles for your singing system are gonna be your pelvic floor muscles actually. So even though people think maybe just diaphragm, like if you've heard about, it, about singing, you think, oh yeah, I should sing for my diaphragm. But truthfully, there are muscles below the diaphragm that help support the diaphragm as your breath is exiting. So you go all the way down to your pelvic floor muscles, um, it's really, really useful and having a knee up or a leg up like this can help that pelvic to, uh, pelvis to tilt under a little bit more. Um, and it can also just encourage you to essentially breathe into your hips. I know that sounds strange, but give it a try. I promise it will help. It's a lot of sustaining power. Whoa. 
Wow. <laughs> um, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> wow. And I think that's the goal. <laughs> I think that's the goal is to make a person feel uncomfortable. Um, it, it reminds me of a dying animal and not in a bad way. Um, I think hearing put me out of my misery over and over, it, it sounds like someone who is just so troubled or, um, something that's ready to go on and the scream, ah, yeah, growing up on a farm, you have a, a close tie to nature sometimes. So, um, yes, anyhow, um, lots of, lots of things about life learned on the farm. I think I'm applying that here and feeling that sort of horrible gut wrench when something just doesn't want to live anymore. Woof. Uh, wow. I'm going to go back. That is very intense. To me, it sounds like he's using the upper part of his vocal tract to make this harsh vocal. Um, I'm gonna go back a few more times and then we'll, I missed the first set of that scream as well. So this sounds more like fry to me. Um, I, the often harsh vocals can be made, you know, in different areas of the vocal tract. Sometimes they're made a little lower, which would be your false vocal folds or vestibular folds. Um, and then up above that, sometimes you'll have rattles happening. Um, Areopiglottic folds can cause some things there. Sometimes the epiglottis will get involved. Really, um, we've seen several different mechanisms that are higher. Um, and often that higher sound um, will contribute to more of this fry scream, or I should say that higher placement will be more involved in the fry scream. Uh, but in particular, it's useful to know that once you've made that sound, you've made the source of the sound essentially, um, sometimes voice scientists will talk about a filter after that. So you have a source of the sound and a filter. The filter is how the sound then is shifted by the cavity or resonance that comes afterwards. So the sound might occur back in here, and then as it's progressing through here, the way that you shape your mouth and your face changes how that sound actually gets emoted to the audience. So in his case, it's really, it's good to look at how sharply he's shaping his mouth and causing the pitch center of this to shift then. Oh, I still missed that first part. He had a really cool scream. Oh, back a little further. Oh, it's gut wrenching. That's really good breath control too. <laughs> Sorry, I just have to mention that. Um, I think that's crazy good breath control. It's uh, it's difficult to not let too much air escape, especially with so much emotion packed behind it. Very, very impressive. One more time. Ooh. I really want to see a remake of The Lord of the Rings into operatic format. There's a little bit of a Wagnerian uh, Lord of the Rings crossover already. Anyhow, but let's let's remake it. Um, and let's add harsh vocals because I need somebody to be on stage like a chorus of harsh vocals singing the Nazgul's please. And then can we have somebody who does Gollum and can fade in and out like with this kind of intensity, he would, oh, that would be so, so cool. Oh, 
And then the elves would have like these like beautiful pristine voices. Anyhow, I would really love to see this happen. Um, let's make it happen. <laughs> and let's go back one more time for this incredible scream. from clean into harsh with that one. Talk about a great example of gradation between clean and harsh. Ooh, that's cool. That would be, that's a really good example and teaching point to use. Oh, that was cool. I've given Oh, that's the, no, okay. I'm gonna go back just a little bit. I have to talk about this emotional impact as well. Um, obviously he's passed now and I think uh, it's, he so keenly is feeling these words and sharing them with us. Um, it, it's so it's so incredibly sad um, that he did pass. And I think it's important to mention sometimes singers get extremely close um, to the things that they're singing about. They're singing about things that are real and truthful, and that's um, it's hitting the audience because it's so real and truthful. Um, and I think it's so important for people to take care of their mental health, especially singers. If you are digging in deep and you are nurturing these motions essentially so that you can share them with an audience, please take care of your mental health. Please, 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 because... Um, Yes, we want everybody to stay around for a long time and continue to share amazing things like this. So just wanted to give that a bit. But at the same time, I want to go back and um, just have a respectful moment of how keenly he felt this and be appreciative of the way he shared it with us. There's a certain kind of beauty in this. It's not the same kind of beauty as a classical song or a ballad, but it's a beauty of just human expression. I can see how it would be incredibly cathartic to have Chester Bennington and Lincoln Park sing this and feel understood, just feel like those emotions and frustrations in life are understood by somebody else and it's all going to be okay. I think that that is very important and I think it's a crucial part of our culture that we have music like this to embrace all different paths and emotions in life. So thank you to everyone for recommending continued songs from Linkin Park. And if you would like to see that first reaction analysis that I did to them, you can check that out in this video over here. I hope to see you again soon.